He's called Harper Reed, and he calls himself, with characteristic uh, understatement, probably one of the coolest guys ever. Actually, he's done something rather interesting. Harper Reed was the head of technology for President Obama's re-election team. It became famous for building the most sophisticated voter tracking database ever seen in a US presidential election. Are there any of those that look interesting to you? By using information from social networks, television viewing habits, and personal donation histories, it was able to micro-target individual voters, sending them millions of personalized emails and Twitter messages each day. It worked, obviously. Well, he's, uh, he's with us now. Um, you're not a politician by background. <laughs> no, not at all. No. Uh, you certainly don't look like a politician. I, I noticed that. <laughs> what, what attracted you to it then? Well, there's this aspect of problem. I think engineers are often looking for the most important or interesting problem set. And when I first was um, kind of recruited, um, the problems that were described were very attractive. You don't often, as an engineer, get this opportunity to do something that's so big. Can you just summarize the problem in words we can understand? Uh, I'll, I'll make an effort. Please. Um, so the problem that we set out to do is we set out to figure out a way to contact all of the correct voters, all the people that, we, that would vote for the president, and make sure they voted. That's to simplify it about as much. To you know, expand a little bit, how do we take all of this data that people are giving us you know, through our email list, through our fundraising, and, and make sure that we are reaching out in the correct way. But you were also in playing into that, uh, what you could find out from social media, yeah. what television programs they watched and the rest of it? Well, no, none of the television stuff. I mean, we did do a little bit where we did some, we, did, we built technology that looked at what all people were looking at, so the aggregate data. But it wasn't so specific. We didn't know what you, Jeremy, were looking the, at. The specifically. point being that you could then precisely target yeah, messages to that people. Was, that was the idea. I mean, and, and, and it the, obviously worked. It, it worked. I mean, there's the president. Yeah. But uh, the, you know, the, the bigger idea is that we wanted to make sure that we were efficient in our movements because campaigns. I'm not very familiar with campaigns here in the UK, but in the US, it's all about resources. It's often who has the most money, who has the most volunteers, who has the most boots on the ground. And so we wanted to make sure that these very valuable people who are doing the, most, the hardest work were able to do it very efficiently. This is a big sea change in the way politics are conducted. Mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's not so much a change as much as it's a, well, we like to call it a force multiplier. What do you mean? Well, politics hasn't really changed. It's a lot about like knocking on doors it's a lot of sending mail and it's a lot of making telephone calls and for the most part those are those are the same type of organizing techniques that have been used for years and years and years in the US and so what we did is we wanted to make all of those things twice three times four times as efficient the idea being that if we have a volunteer that's out there knocking on doors that that volunteer can work just as much time but do twice as much work or um, make sure that, that their their contacts and the people that they're talking to are the right people did you find anything at all creepy or sinister about the fact that you were learning so much about people? Well, the, the, the good thing was um, all of the data, uh, predominantly all of the data, was, was really given to us by the same people that we were looking at it. So the volunteers, you know, knocking on a door, having that conversation, then using that conversation to, to make sure that we weren't wasting the, either people's time. Um, but I don't think it was creepy. Um, I think it was just helping us do our job and making sure that we were, you know, Reelecting the president, but there's a there's a kind of thin line between targeting the message very precisely yeah, so and changing the message, I think formulating a, policy. There's a little bit of a nuance here that I'd like to to, to insert, which is um, the goal here was to listen. The goal here was to use that targeting, reach out there, and make sure that we could have that conversation with a person. And it was also, of course, used in some cases, not the targeting, but the analytics and data, just to make sure we were doing the right work. But for the most part, the stuff that people kind of say, this is creepy, um, it's very much what businesses are doing and whatnot. But besides that, it's more Doesn't about... I mean it's not creepy. I was going to say, that's why I wanted to throw that over there. But besides that, it's, it's more so that the idea was, how do we get the conversation closer to the user or closer to the voter or closer to that constituent? Do you get a feeling that... Guys like you, I don't mean with your facial hair, but I mean right. guys like guys with your set of skills yeah. and your yeah. interests are uh, uh, going to take over politics? I don't know about take over. I'm a little, 
I'm a little concerned that they'll focus on just getting tech for tech's sake. But I do think that there's not a business out there, politics, marketing, you know, commerce, whatever, that doesn't require in this mm -hmm. day and age uh, a lot of technology. And so I think that, you know, like in the U.S., it just turned out that politics was no different. 